Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another speed painting tutorial. And in this video, I'll be tackling the Iron Golems from Warcry using the Citadel range of paints. Now, the intention of this tutorial is to get your miniatures painted up to a respectable gaming standard in as little time as possible, using as few paints as possible. Because, after all, playing with painted miniatures of any standard is better than boring bare plastic. So, some key things to note before we start. Paint all of your miniatures at the same time, applying each colour to each model before moving on to the next paint. And remember to keep the steps quick and not worry too much about those little mistakes or getting things perfect. The first step in painting is to prime so that the later layers of paint properly stick to the surface of the model. I've used the lead balcher spray for this as this will allow us to shave off a lot of time when painting all of those armour panels, chainmail and weapons. If you prefer a darker finish, you could use the spray over a black primer instead. You will notice that I've only partly assembled some of the models. This was to make painting some of the harder to reach areas a lot easier, and therefore less time consuming. To hold these components when painted, I've used a pin vise to drill a small hole before attaching a length of 1mm wire with a little super glue. The first step in painting our silvery warriors is to paint all of the gold and red armour with some of the contrast paint Agaros Dunes. The rich pigmentation of the contrast paint over the silvery metal will result in a quick but effective appearance of gold or brass. I'm applying my contrast paint straight from the pot and ensuring that I evenly cover each of the areas that I'm tackling. If you want a richer or lighter gold colour, you can adjust how much you apply to them. Next up, we'll be using some more contrast paint, this time Blood Angels Red, for the red panels of the armour. Much like the last step, apply this paint straight from the pot and spread it out according to your own tastes. I personally applied my paint quite sparingly as I didn't want a red that was too vibrant. Take care with the step not to overspill onto the gold or silver metal areas of the model, but don't worry if you do cover over the skin or the weapon grips, as we'll be touching these up in the next step. With the armour completed, we can next begin to work on the skin and the weapon grips. For both of these areas, we'll use some grey sear, both for the pale skin appearance it will provide, but also because it's a good base colour for contrast paints. However, before we use it, we first need to thin it out a little. Mix in water in small amounts until your consistency is similar to what you see here. Unlike my other videos, this time we need to thin the paint to make it easier to apply, rather than just giving us a smooth coverage. Once thinned, paint over all of the bare flesh of your iron golems, as well as the wraps around the weapon handles. Grey Seer is quite strongly pigmented, so you shouldn't need to apply several coats, but if you find the silver showing through, you can touch these parts up where needed. Over the handles that we painted with Gracia, we can next apply another contrast paint, Akalian Green. This greenish blue colour will contrast nicely against the red armour, and the contrast paint will create some basic highlights along the banding. The final step is to apply an all over wash of Agrax Earthshade over the entirety of your miniatures. However, I would recommend mixing the wash in with some of the contrast medium. This will reduce the strength of the wash down, giving you a much more subtle shading. When this reduced strength wash is applied over the skin that we painted with Gracia, it will complete the pallid skin tone that we are trying to achieve. By using that thin down wash, it will help to maintain the pale tone, whereas a stronger wash would have darkened it down too much. Over the armour, the wash will flow into the recessed areas and really help to boost the shading, and creating that appearance of deeper, more defined recesses. Finally, when applied over the silver weapons and chainmail, the brown of the wash will create a slightly oily and dirty surface, perfect for a chaos warband such as this. And here we have the completed Iron Golems warband. I finish things off by creating a simple basing scheme using some textured paints, some dry brushing and some grass tufts. This entire warband took me around 4 hours to paint in total, which can easily be spread out over a few evenings. Now while the paint job certainly won't win any awards, it's a good way of quickly getting your warband painted up. After all, it's much better to play with a fully painted warband than a horde of bare grey plastic. If you enjoyed the speed painting style of video and would like to see me give the same treatment to other miniatures or warbands, do let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions or just like to chat with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description below. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching and goodbye.